Good afternoon. This is uh, Thursday, September 16th at 1 o'clock. This is a regular meeting of the City Council, the Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agencies. Uh, at this point, uh, I will call for the flag salute uh, being led by Council Member Richard Kite. Thank you, Mayor. Would you all stand, please, and join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Christy, may we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Council Member Hobart? Here. Council Member Kite? Here. Council Member Smotrich? Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Here. Mayor Weil? Here. Uh, I will uh, ask uh, for a motion to excuse Council Member Smotrich. So moved. Observing the uh, Jewish holiday. Second. There is a motion and a second. Uh, please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. At this point, we have um, a presentation by David Hammer uh, regarding the Rotary Club of Rancho Mirage. Uh, David is the president. I had the honor of uh, being uh, present at their meeting several weeks ago. David, you do a great job, and we welcome you, and we're glad you're here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, City Council, for having me here this afternoon. I want to thank each of you for your service to the community. As a former county council for Trinity County for six years, I know what it's like to be a public servant and serve local government. So as uh, Ted said, I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Ranch Barrage, and this afternoon, I'm going to speak about who we are, what we are, and why we're here. Our club currently has 30 members, and we are the, your neighbors, your friends. Uh, excuse me. Get those to back up. Your friends, your neighbors, community leaders, and problem solvers that are part of a 1.2 million organization worldwide but to, that are here to serve the community and international to make a difference in our world a better place. Last year, of course, we're meeting just solely online. We're now having live meetings and hybrid meetings as well. So we're a service organization and our motto is service above self. We provide members with the opportunity to provide service to their community and around the world. I've been a member of Rotary for over 46 years, and some of my most rewarding experiences in life have been through Rotary. We have over 20 community service projects we complete every year, and one of them is providing backpacks and school supplies to the needy families in our area. Uh, this year, we, we donated and delivered more than 300 backpacks and school supplies to kids through the Salvation Army. Another project is that we provide dictionaries to every third grade student in Ranch Mirage. There's three schools, and we just get, got it, again, ordered the, the dictionaries for this year, and we're delivering them this next month. Some of our projects are hands-on. We're not just there to write a check every day or every week. Uh, one of our projects this last year was, was uh, eradicating the uh, Sahara mustard weed uh, in the Coachella Valley National Wild Refuge. Another one of our projects is providing treats to the troops at the Bob Hope USO. Uh, and this is this last fall, we do this near Halloween, and the, the troops seem to enjoy this. As I'm sure you've all been to the USO. It's a, a great facility to have within our community. 
The other one is that this morning uh, at our meeting, we didn't have a presentation. Instead, we had a hands-on project and packaged over 300 little bags, little packages like this, Ziploc bags, with personal hygiene products that we're donating half of those to the um, Jocelyn Center for Needy Seniors and the other half to the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission for the Homeless. Another project we have that we do in conjunction with Interact, which is a high school rotary program, is we donate blankets to the homeless that were, uh, some of these blankets were actually made by the Interact Club and we purchased the supplies for that. Another hands-on project we started this last year is the Adopt a Highway. And our club adopted a two mile stretch north of uh, Palm Springs between Highway 111 and North Palm Springs. Uh, so this is our, our last cleanup. We have another cleanup coming this Saturday. And if any of you would like to join us, um, please give me a call. I, I gave each of you one of my business cards, give me a call or, or text me or, or email me and you can join us to clean the highway 7.15 a.m. on Saturday morning. We do this uh, six times a year. And of course, it's not just all about hands-on, et cetera. We do collect money uh, and donate to various sources, excuse me, various um, uh, clubs, et cetera. We donate every year $500 to the Boys and Girls Club of Cathedral City, $500 to Big Brothers and Big Sisters, $500 to the YMCA, $500 to the Salvation Army, and 14 scholarship totaling um, $12,000, I think that is. Yes, $12,000. I'm not sure why my slide is different than that one. One of our, uh, one of our projects we do every year is support the, the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission and, and various projects that we partner with. And as you probably know, they, they provide meals to over 1,000 people a day. That's 1,000 meals a day. They also have other programs, including uh, providing um, supplies, nutrition, et cetera, and training for young mothers and for children. And we provide the materials for that, the supplies and nutritional needs for that. This last October, we have what we call a Stocktoberfest rather than an Oktoberfest. And this is my wife. Uh, we collected over 600 pairs of new socks and donated them to the needy, distributed through the, uh, the, uh, the mission. Also, they have a program in training the, 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 the homeless and people in, uh, that have issues. Uh, and when they finish their training, they receive training on how to do interviews and how to get a job. But a lot of them don't have the clothes for that. So these are the clothes that we've donated. The, the coat uh, second to the, the, the right is the one I wore in, in court um, many years ago when I was county council. This year we donated uh, through the Rotary, we donated over half a ton of, of, of onions to the uh, mission and that they used in the preparation of their meals. And these were donated by uh, Rotarian John Hawk out of the Central Valley. And we also were able to give the, the, the mission $2,300. So those were all community projects, but we also have international projects. We have a sister club in Santa Ana, El Salvador, and during the pandemic, we provided needy supplies uh, in El Salvador through our sister club in Santa Ana. We're currently working on trying to do a water and sanitation project uh, in El Salvador, and that's in the planning stages at this time. For over 30 years, Rotary International's brand project has been to eradicate polio worldwide. And we've spent more than $2.2 billion on this project and have already vaccinated more than 3 billion children in 122 countries. There is now only two countries that have the wild 
polio virus, that's Afghanistan and Pakistan. And when I name those countries, I'm sure you can understand the reasons why. Uh, it is a challenge working in those countries, but we have help. We've partnered with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they have, they have um, matching funds of millions of dollars each year with Rotary and with uh, UNICEF to eradicate polio worldwide. Locally, we have some prominent people in our community, including Jack Nicholas, who has been supporting this project for a number of years. On October 24th is the World Polio Day, in which we're commemorating what we've accomplished and seeking support for what we want to finish, that is, eradicating polio in the last two countries. I've given each of you a little pin that says, end polio. And I, I, I encourage you to wear that on October 24th uh, and, and to support this project worldwide. Uh, many of our members, including myself, have participated in vaccinating children uh, from polio. This was uh, me, obviously, uh, taken about six years ago in Togo, West Africa, and certainly a rewarding experience for me. And Rotary is not just a service organization, we're also a social organization. And once a month, we get together rather than having a regular meeting and socialize. You might recognize him, probably many of you know Joe. Uh, he's been a member for a number of years and a strong supporter of the community and of the club. And Rotary is also about ethics. We have this four-way test that we try to strive to, to follow both in our professions and our personal life. And we meet uh, on Thursdays mornings, except for the last three of the month. And sometimes we even get some local leaders come and speak to us. Oh, oh, there's Ted in the background right there. Now, I was being serious. We have uh, Ted spoke to us, and the week before that, the CEO from uh, Eisenhower was our guest speaker. Uh, and we're all setting, also setting up some more presentations from local leaders. Uh, and the goal is to keep us informed about what's going on both locally and nationally and internationally. So as I said, we meet on Thursdays at 7.15 at the Ranch Mirage Library, and we thank the city and the, and the library for making that room available to us. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I have each of you, I've given you a brochure uh, and my business card. Feel, uh, feel free to contact me. And we'd like to invite the city uh, to be members. We now have membership available to corporations and governmental agencies. The um, Chamber of Commerce is a member of our club, and Stacy is the representative from the, uh, from the chamber who usually attends our meetings. Uh, any of you could attend if the city joined. I know that you already have somebody on the board of directors for the Jocelyn Center, uh, and would love to have you also join our club. Any questions? You know, David, you Thank did a so great much. job, and the Rotary Club is fabulous. Uh, so many of the members of the club, obviously, uh, we're familiar with their pictures are are familiar to us because they're just so active in the community and uh, uh, we thank you for your contribution I know you're all very dedicated and sincere people uh, and you know continue the good work thank you so much thank you David the um, the next proclamation will be uh, recognizing September 2021 as Hunger Action Month. Uh, Matthew Williams and Kathleen Sullivan are here. Uh, I'm going to, you can come up to the, uh, uh, to the podium. Uh, what I'll do with your permission is let me read the proclamation and then I'll come down and present it to you. And uh, uh, it essentially is honoring Hunger Action Month. It is, whereas hunger and poverty are issues of vital concern in California, where 20% of people face hunger and one in five children 
do not know where their next meal will be coming from. Whereas the city of Rancho Mirage is committed to taking the that those in the city of Rancho Mirage need. I think that's exemplified by our recent commitment to uh, the Great Plates program, as you know. Uh, whereas the city of Rancho Mirage is committed to working with Fine Food Bank, a member of the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, in educating people about the role and importance of food bank, in addressing hunger and raising awareness of the need to devote more resources and attention to hunger issues. And whereas more than 150,000 individuals, an amazing statistic, on average in the eastern Riverside and sa southern San Bernardino counties of Fines service area rely on food provided by the members of the Fine, Fine Food Bank each month. And whereas the coronavirus pandemic has had devastating health and economic impacts across the county. And it is projected that over 110,000 more people could face hunger in eastern Riverside and southern San Bernardino counties in the wake of the pandemic this year. Whereas the members of Fine Food Bank distributed more than 24 million meals from June 30th, 2020 to July 31st, 2021, through its network of food, pantries, soup kitchen, kitchens, shelters, and other community organizations. And whereas the month of September has been designated Hunger Action Month in order to bring attention to food insecurity in our communities and to engage the public in action, including volunteer shifts, social media shares, and donations, to ensure nobody has to, has to make an impossible choice between food and other necessities like medicines, utilities, or child care. And Food Bank across the country, including the members of Fine Food Bank, will host numerous events throughout the, the month of September to bring awareness and help and hunger to their community. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Ted Weil, Mayor of the City of Rancho Mirage, and on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby proclaim September Hunger Action Month, September 21, and I'm signing it along with the City Clerk, Christy Ramos, and it'll be my pleasure to come down there and hand you this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, while you're making your way down there, in addition to uh, your proclamation, we have some photos of our library that we're lighting up orange all of September um, that'll be on the screens. And we're communicating out through all of our channels um, the uh, Fine Food Bank message. And then we're also planning a staff volunteer day for early in the spring with the Fine Food Bank team. So, Kayleen and Matthew, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members, and the residents of Rancho Mirage for uh, proclaiming September Hunger Action Month. You guys are integral partners to um, ending hunger in our community. So thank you. And uh, as you mentioned, thank you so much for lighting up the public library orange. It's great. Thank you. I can't say enough good things about the Fine Food Bank. I had the honor of being involved in a telethon several months ago where we raised a significant amount of money. And uh, 
it was very heartwarming to be able to do that. Uh, and the comments that people make when they call in with their donations is just incredible. And uh, uh, it's the type of thing that you feel so good about being able to devote some time and energy uh, for a worthy cause. The, the next proclamation uh, is regarding the emergency preparedness. Uh, I'm going to present a proclamation to Mary Lou Souter. Mary, if you want to come up to the podium. And again, I'll read this and come down and present it to you. Uh, and Mary has a short presentation as well as uh, a PowerPoint. And uh, let, me, uh, let me read this. Mary is uh, one of our favorites. She's been active in the emergency preparedness program for many years. Uh, again, uh, she's a perfect example of what Rancho Mirage is about a tireless worker, dedicated, uh, truly doing it out of love and care for her city. Uh, Mary, we can never say thank you enough. The, the proclamation will read as follows. Whereas emergencies and natural disasters are a worldwide threat that come in many forms and broad magnitudes and cause incalculable impacts on economies, the environment, and human lives. And whereas the city of Rancho Mirage and its residents are vulnerable to their own share of hazards, including, but not limited to, earthquakes, flooding, and extreme heat. And whereas a major earthquake originating along the San Andreas Fault poses the single greatest threat to Rancho Mirage in terms of recorded historic events, projections of probability, potential magnitude, and prolonged recovery efforts. And whereas geological experts advise that the southern San Andreas Fault is the most probable area in the state to experience a major earthquake. Rancho Mirage experienced a 100-year flooding event on February 14, 2018, commonly known as the Valentine Day Flood. Every year, Rancho Mirage experiences sweltering heat conditions during the peak months of June to September, which generates huge demand for cooling, electricity, and increases the risk of widespread blackouts or rolling blackouts. And the residents, businesses, and communities of Rancho Mirage can prepare themselves by implementing basic emergency preparedness steps. Information is readily available online at www.ranchomiragepreparedness.org and www.ready dot gov or by obtaining preparedness brochures and other information available at Rancho Mirage City Hall or the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. And a few simple steps and a few dollars spent before a disaster can save lives and money and reduce stress and anxiety experienced during an actual emergency or natural event. So therefore, be it resolved that I, Ted Weil, mayor of the city of Rancho Mirage, and on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby proclaim October 21 as Emergency Preparedness Month, and ask our citizens to join with the 1.9 million people worldwide who participate in the Great Shakeout to prepare mitigate and respond and recover from earthquakes, and further to seek out education and make all reasonable efforts to prepare their families, loved ones, homes, and businesses for the inevitable impacts of emergencies and natural disasters. 
in witness thereof I here do, set my hand and cause the seal, the city of Rancho Mirage, to be affixed this September 16th, 2021. And it's my pleasure to sign this. And Mary Lou, I'll present this to you in a moment and ask, why don't you go ahead with your presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, city council members, for always um, making me feel so welcome when I come to visit with you. Um, today, I do have a short presentation for you to see. And it's not so much about uh, what the commission, you know, how we're formed or what we've done over the years. But more, more importantly at this point in time, it's about the month of October coming up and what we'll be doing as a commission uh, that you might want to involve yourselves in or that your uh, television audience might want to join in. So uh, the emergency preparedness month is October uh, 2021, just around the corner. So these are some of the things we'll be doing. Uh, next slide, please. So the first um, thing that we're doing is being here today in front of you and uh, the city council is so kind to uh, pass this resolution on our behalf. Um, it's very important uh, because this is uh, held in such high esteem and people recognize that across our community. And to them, I hope, it means that this is something I as a resident should pay attention to. Uh, next slide, please. So we're going to approach um, the residents and businesses in Rancho Mirage a little bit differently this year. We're going to do the same things we always have done as far as outreach, uh, trying to speak to HOAs, sending out e-blasts, uh, doing various things of that kind. Uh, in addition to that, we, uh, we're going to have two billboards along the streets of Rancho Mirage. Uh, existing billboards, by the way, someone called me and wanted to know where the new billboards are going to be set up because they didn't think that was a good idea. I said, no, they're existing billboards. Uh, so that one will be near City Hall and the other will be on Bob Hope uh, at Dinah Shore. Uh, so those billboards will have the, the uh, message that we hear all the time when we talk about responding to an earthquake. The proper uh, behavior for individuals to take is not to run, uh, not to uh, try and drive fast and make it home, but rather to, if you're, if you're in a setting like this, to drop to your knees if you can, cover your head and neck, and hold on to something secure so you're not knocked over or uh, that you can stay in one place. The idea is to try to make yourself as small a target as possible. So the, they the shortened that into a catchy phrase, to drop, cover, and hold on. So that's what the billboards will say. And that those messages will be up for public viewing uh, from the 11th to the 24th of this month. And we selected those dates for a reason, because the great shakeout uh, that's held uh, not just nationwide anymore, but actually worldwide, is held on uh, the 21st this year, 21st of October. So it encompasses that date as well. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that we're going to do here in Rancho Mirage is host a preparedness uh, fair, safety and preparedness fair, uh, here at the Rancho Mirage Library and, and Observatory in the parking lot. You won't miss it. We'll have a huge fire truck out there, an ambulance. I believe the CERT van will be there. Um, there'll be numerous pop-up tents uh, with a variety of agencies there. This is your chance to talk to the fire department, the Red Cross, the uh, Coachella, Water, uh, Coachella Valley Water District and Edison and Southern California Gas and all those folks and say, ask them, what's going to, and why is my bill so high? No, when, you know, what, when an earthquake happens, what are you going to do for us? What are you not going to do for us? What are we responsible for ourselves? So that will give you an opportunity to go and actually get information from those individuals themselves and see what they have to offer and what they're going to be doing. Um, it's a, it'll be a lot of fun in a lot of ways because the, uh, the fire trucks and, and the uh, ambulance and always, all, it always adds an extra ex excitement to it. You can actually go and, and see what all that looks like and touch it and, and talk to the gentlemen and the ladies in their uniforms. And it just brings um, our community closer, I think, in that way. So that'll be again on the uh, 9th, uh, Saturday morning, uh, 9th of October, in the library parking lot from nine until noon. So please come along and join us. 
Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the Great American Shakeout, this is a little more information about it. it millions of people do participate. Uh, some major companies take time in the middle of their day, uh, most often on the date that's selected. Uh, as I said, this will be the 21st of uh, October this year. And they actually do a drill uh, with uh, all their, their uh, employees and, and executive staff and everyone participates. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but your city council does that as well. So if, if folks uh, around town aren't aware of that, uh, the whole city staff actually participates in, in this activity uh, here at City Hall, uh, which makes my heart happy. That's, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for your leadership, Isaiah. That's wonderful. Uh, so if you so choose, wherever you are at that point in time, if you're in the supermarket, see what happens. Drop, cover, and hold on. Uh, if you're in your car, you pull off to the side of the road slowly, carefully, signal, you know, all the things you're supposed to do. Stay in your car and wait it out. Wait till the earth stops moving before you get out of your car. So um, there are scenarios that have been developed for about every situation you can imagine, uh, what the best thing to do in a situation like that. Um, if you're interested for more information, you could look at the website, ranchermiragepreparedness.org, or give me a call, and I'd be glad to chat with you. Um, so that's the Great American Shakeout this month, or in October, I should say. Next slide, please. So uh, as a grand finale for the month, uh, on the 27th, we're looking again, as I say, things we don't normally do as much. This time we're focusing on our businesses in Rancho Mirage. So we're, uh, we've invited um, Inez Pierce. She's the president of what's called the Disaster, Re Disaster Resistant Business Toolkit Work Group. And she's coming out from LA to, no, she's not. <laughs> you looked worried. <laughs> she will have a Zoom presentation for the, the business event. Uh, and she's uh, part of uh, just about every, she, she's an advisor to Dr. Lucy Jones and her group. She's a very, uh, very smart, very, um, just th thinks outside the box kind of lady. She's very fascinating. So I hope that you'll be able to uh, participate in the Zoom if you like or encourage the businesses that you might uh, have as special friends or, or uh, are special to you. Uh, Katie Stice, the uh, CEO at our Chamber of Commerce, was a part, uh, she's an advisor to our commission, and she was part of the group that uh, decided to uh, invite this particular person on this particular topic. So the seven steps to earthquake safety for businesses it's the first time this will be offered anywhere, this, this particular uh, workshop. So uh, it's my hope that as many uh, businesses across the range will take part in the Zoom. And there will be more information about this on our website as well. And it's a good thing it's uh, during the week and in the morning hours. So uh, uh, it's pretty easy, I think, uh, easier than a weekend for businesses to participate in. Uh, next slide, please. So. I thank you very much for allowing me to present to you today. And again, please go to our website, ranchermiragepreparedness.org, and uh, participate in as many of the things as possible. If you would like, if you belong to a club or a group and would like someone to do a presentation to you about uh, preparedness, uh, please let us know. We'd be delighted to do that. We have several people on the commission who are excellent speakers, and they'd be glad to come out and speak with you, or a Zoom presentation we're able to do as well. Thank you again. I appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you. Mary Lou. Oh, okay. thank you. It's my pleasure to uh, present this to you. Uh, more than deserving. Thanks for your dedication. Some of the things that you've showed us today are terrific. The October 9th uh, event is going to be fabulous with all of the uh, entities that are participating, yes. which will be terrific. So we thank you again. We thank your entire committee and all the dedicated workers that you have. Thank you. I have one commissioner who was able to come with me today, Dave Richardson. So Dave, thanks for coming today. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. Thank you, Good to see you.
our Emergency Preparedness Commission is a great group of people, and uh, I had the opportunity to be the staff liaison to the commission a few years back, and I promise you there is valuable information that they can share with you that is very practical on how you can help yourself in a very difficult moment. Uh, thank you for all you guys do. I would highly recommend anyone hearing this message, please attend one of their events or reach out to them. They're a great group of people. They're all volunteers uh, and they have some great advice for you. So thanks for what you guys do. Thank you, Isaiah. And we're now at the non-agenda public comment portion of our meeting. This is an op opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Isaiah, would you handle that for us, please? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, anyone participating remotely that wishes to make a non-agenda public comment, now is the time to do so. You would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine if you're on your telephone. Uh, we will take our in-person audience before we move to our remote audience. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? Yes, we have two. First is Mihaela Vacarescu. Hi. Good afternoon, Honorable Mr. Mayor, Ted Well, respected council members, city staff, and everyone else present here today. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm Mihaela Vakarescu. I am here as an ambassador and a manager of the river at Rancho Mirage Mall. As you know, I'm the new property manager at the river. I'm honored to be the new manager, and it is a pleasure to join a great team over there. I consider myself fortunate to have been given this opportunity to manage this iconic place for the city of Rancho Mirage. This position offers new and exciting challenges, of course, and I look forward to bringing back the finest reputation that river is very well known for. I can already see that this over here is a fine group of people, and I hope we will be working great together. I'm not going to take any questions for today, so I won't spend too much out of your time today. But I will be very happy, and I look forward to having um, opportunity of answering your questions for next month. I promise I'll be here next month with a lot of great news about the river. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. The next speaker is Jackie Willis. It's actually Jack Okay, so you'll speak on that item? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more speaker cards? No, that's all. Um, anyone here in person that did not fill out a speaker card that wishes to make a non-agenda public comment? All right, we'll go to our remote audience. Kate Spates. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kate Spates, proud Rancho Mirage resident for over six years. I sent an email to every city council member, the city manager and the city clerk on July 10th and subsequently read it out loud in your council meeting five days later. And not one of you has responded to it in any way. So I'm going to read it again and I trust that you will acknowledge it as I'm speaking for hundreds of people that you can't ignore any longer. What will it take for you to thoughtfully consider changing the council meeting time from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m.? How many signatures? How many public speakers? Will it take a ballot measure? Please review your council meeting attendance numbers, both in person and vi virtual, and consider this request. Simply watching the playback of the meeting on YouTube is not the same as participating in a meeting. Observing a meeting after it's over isn't exactly democracy at work. Over the past year, the meeting videos have had an average of 113 views. The petition that the folks from Rancho Mirage Forward created is not a mean-spirited or in any way critical of how the council handles city business. It's merely a request to push back the start of the meeting time by a few hours to allow more residents the ability to participate in our local government and increase awareness about the issues and opportunities in our great city. A meeting in the middle of a weekday precludes many from attending, which is not equitable. 
I'm glad to hear that you are continuing with Zoom attendance for the public now that you've resumed, resumed in-person meetings. But I ask this very legitimate question, what will it take for Rancho Mirage City Council to change the meeting time to 5 p.m.? I look forward to your response. Thank you for your comment. Uh, seeing no one else that wishes to speak, we will close the non-agenda public comments and I'll turn this back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, we will now go to the council board member comments and I will ask if any of our members have a comment to make. Charlie? I do, thank you very much. And it's just a quick update that the Rancho Mirage Library that has been closed since um, August 30th for renovations will now be opened on the 21st next week uh, with a, a brand new uh, look. And we all want you to come and see what has taken place. It'll be open from Monday through Saturday, closed Sunday and Monday. And I will not go any further because I know that Aaron Espinoza at our next meeting will have great pictures of all the great work that they have done at the library uh, to improve it uh, to great extent. If you have any questions, you can call the library at 760-341-7323. But uh, I know you'll all be uh, thrilled at what has happened with that library. It's just fantastic. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Charlie. Dana, do you have any? All right, and Richard, any comments? Nothing today, thank you. All right. Um, that concludes our uh, council comments. Uh, I will now ask uh, if anyone has any um, corrections or changes to the minutes uh, of August 20th, 2021, the special meeting. September 2 and se September 2nd, 2021 special meeting and September 2nd, 2021 regular meeting. Um, is there anybody, uh, Isaiah, that uh, you know on, has called in on any, any comments? No. Uh, does anybody have any changes or corrections? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion uh, I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the consent calendar, and that'll be handled by our city manager, Isaiah Hagerman. Isaiah, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, you have five items on the consent calendar for your consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two is to adopt ordinance number 1187, second reading, approving the amended and restated statutory development agreement by and between the city of Rancho Mirage and BBB Rancho Mirage RE LLC regarding the development of a Ferrari automobile dealership on Highway 111. Item number three is to approve the Rancho Mirage Energy Authority 2020 power content label. Item number four are contracts. Item number five are demands. And uh, before we go to council, uh, we will open up the public comment period. If any member of the public wishes to speak on one of these five items, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, do we have any speaker cards for the consent calendar? We do not. Anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak on one of the consent calendar items? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to our remote audience. Seeing no one uh, that wishes to speak, Mr. Mayor, uh, we'll close the public comment period and I'll return this to the council. Mr. Mayor, 
Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent calendar. I'll second that. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. The, um, the next item will be the um, general plan zoning map amendment case number GPZMA-20-0003. Seven zero one zero five Frank Sinatra Drive, and that'll be handled by Mina uh, in our planning department. Mina, if you would please. Thank you, and good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. For your consideration today, we have GPZMA two zero dash zero 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 three, and the applicant is the city. The general plan zoning map amendment request is for a property located immediately east of the existing Wolfson Park off of Frank Sinatra Drive. The city was able to acquire the property at the tail end of last year, and when the city purchased the property, it contained a dilapidated house, tennis court, and casita, all of which were in a state of great disrepair. Upon purchasing the property, it was deemed that it was a threat to public safety and was subsequently demolished, graded, and treated with a dust mitigation agent. The current proposal is to change the zone of the property from its current designation of low density residential, RL3, to be consistent with the zoning of the adjacent park, which is Open Space Public Park, OSPP. This would facilitate an expansion of Wolfson Park onto the subject property and would allow the city to create an enhanced amenity. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you for your presentation, Mina. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up the public testimony portion of this public hearing. If any member of the public would like to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. You would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Uh, before we go to our remote audience. Uh, Christy, do we have any speaker cards? Yes, we have one. Jackie Wills. Want me to get up? Okay, please. I'm Jacqueline Wills. Hello, everyone. I've never been here before, so it's my first time. Um, I'm Jacqueline Wills, and I live at Rancho Mirage Racquet Club, which is adjacent to the park and the area that's going to be developed. And I was, I know, I don't know really what's going on there. I've been to some of the, the council meetings of our association, but it's vague of what is going on there. And I also wanted to see if there is a way of putting a gate that we can access from our complex. I don't know if that's something that you need to approve and also our association, because it would be really nice that we can access the park from a gate from our association. But if Ken, I don't know if uh, uh, we have to get that approval from our association as well. But can we get it from the city? Yeah, so the First? city staff's been working closely with your HOA. Right. Uh, and so the, the council has already approved the plans to extend Wolfson Park onto this parcel. Yes. Uh, which those plans have been shown to your HOA. Okay. I'm going to ask our director of public works, Ryan Stendell, to uh, give you his business card, and he'd be happy to uh, go through the details with you. Okay. That what's going to be there yep. and the part. Okay, great. Yep. That'd be super. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Uh, any other speaker cards, Christy? No. Okay. Anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak? All right, we'll go to our remote audience. Okay, seeing uh, no one else that wishes to speak, uh, we will close that portion of the public hearing and I will return this to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, obviously, this is a, an extremely exciting project for the city, uh, one we've been looking forward to for a long time. And uh, uh, we know that it's coming to fruition. Uh, with that, I will ask for any comments. Uh, Richard, any thoughts on this? No, uh, Mayor, I think it's going to be a great project once it gets completed. A lot of people utilize that park and tie it in with a trail. It's really going to give it a whole new, uh, different look. So 
look forward to getting out there, meeting you out there, and, and seeing what's going on. Absolutely. No, it's a wonderful entrance to the Butler Abrams Trail. There's no question about it. Charlie? Well, I'd like to say it's been a long time, a lot of effort, a lot of thought, a lot of input, a lot of meetings, and it is going to be absolutely fantastic in addition to Wolferson Park for the residents of Rancho Mirage and those who use the trail. So with that, if you wish me, I will make the motion. All right, before you do that, let me ask if Dana has any comments that he wants to make. No, I support the motion, but it's stated everything that's All right. Very important. Is there if that be the case, go ahead, Charlie. Why don't you Very make good. The Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make the motion to the City Council A, approve the filing of a categorical explanation of environmental impact pursuant to California Environmental Quality Act. CEQA guidelines 15061 B3 and 15304 class 4 and B approve the introduction of ordinance number next in order first reading amending the general plan zoning map land use designation from residential low density RL3 to open space park public park OSPP on approximately 1.1 acres located at 70105 Frank Sinatra Drive under general plan zoning map amendment case number GPZMA20-003. Thank you. Uh, if you would, uh, there's a motion and a second. Please vote. Who was the second? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. The, uh, the next item on our calendar is the consideration of a four-year marketing plan. That will be presented by Gabe Cotting, our Director of Marketing. Gabe, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, staff, and attendees. So as uh, we previously discussed on July, a little background for this one on July 16th, 2020, City Council authorized City Manager and Director of Marketing to be begin working with a company specializing in destination marketing and branding to, uh, to look at the city's tourism logo and suggest a, so a sophisticated and cohesive brand campaign that best showcases Rancho Mirage. On September 2nd, 2021, a study session was held with city council staff and open to members of the public and a proposed four-year marketing plan, master plan and tourism brand concepts were presented. Feedback at the study session was positive and specifically called for the geolocator heart of the Palm Springs Valley to be included in the logo branding. And in addition, requested uh, key demographics to be added uh, in as well. We'd like to walk through that presentation as we speak. Some of the key findings uh, for when we initially engaged a desti mar uh, destination marketing expert uh, consultant was that the city of Rancho Mirage did not have a marketing master plan to guide strategy and resources. Uh, the city's marketing department wasn't actively marketing the destination and key drive and feeder markets. The city's tourism collateral, photography, design campaign, video assets were 12 plus years old and, and were outdated and the city's marketing department wasn't focused on their main purpose of driving traffic to resorts and attractions. So focusing on the main purpose, the city's marketing department in, from 2007 to 2012 established a city tourism logo, a tagline, and created a vibrant, vibrant campaign marketing resorts and attractions. The city worked with res resorts and had significant media buys in key drive and feeder markets. The city, the city spent on average 300000 per year with an average TOT, that's the transient occupancy tax, the hotel bed tax of $4.5 million, focusing to attract visitors to Rancho Mirage. The city's marketing department from 2013 to 2020 shifted a bit. The, the city shifted focus from attracting visitors to our destination to launching localized communication and event production. The city launched RM Magazine, which was mailed to residents and placed in RM, RM resorts and hotels. The city built the Rancho Mirage Amphitheater and allocated significant budget and staff time to managing the program, which fell into the marketing department. 
And then the city began to spend on average about 75,000 per year in calendar year 2019 and fiscal year 1920 through the Greater Palm Springs CVB summer chill campaign, which we opted in our three resorts. However, spending 75,000 marketing our resorts with a TOT of now $10 million. Some of our purpose of being here today is from 2021 and as we move forward, what we should be doing as a marketing department, what we're suggesting, the city, sh the city, should, the city should draft and approve a four-year marketing master plan, which you'll see here shortly, that guides purpose and resources, Re redirect focus of marketing department back to destination marketing and attracting visitors to Rancho Mirage, reestablish the position and position Rancho Mirage as premier luxury destination it has always been. What we'll be reviewing here today, a draft of a four-year marketing master plan that includes all key initiatives to refocus the marketing department. <clears throat> City of Rancho Mirage's current archive of tourism brand assets and collateral. Costs associated with previous campaign production and impl implementation. Cost analysis on tourism specific spending from other desert cities. A quick look at brand architecture and, pers and brand personality. And then also a recommended brand campaign that includes a color palette a reimagined tourism logo with the geolocator, photography concepts, tagline concepts, and some video and a video script. Here we're looking at a four-year plan that we've kind of labeled by year. First year being when it kicks off, and if this was approved, this would be our transition year. This is where we really start to refocus what the marketing department does and uh, and is guided by. Year two becomes an elevation of that. Once we have this guiding plan in place and this new tourism campaign and we've shifted our focus back, in our second year, this is when Sensei Porcupine Creek, the, the Valley's only six-star resort, will be online. Year three becomes celebration. Year three is our 50th year anniversary. Uh, the city will turn 50 years old. It'll also be the 10th year of our Riders Festival. It'll also be the fifth year of our, uh, of our observatory. So it'll be a great year to celebrate. And so our, our department wants to really focus on uh, what that 50th year celebration is gonna look like. And then, and then into 24, 25, that's when a lot of um, section 31 and the Grand Oasis, so much of the major development that's happening in Rancho Mirage is gonna materialize and come online. So we wanted a plan that kind of took us through our 50th year anniversary and then really brought us into the next era of Rancho Mirage. So here throughout the plan, we just described kind of the vision for that year. I found that labeling a year and naming it a year kind of brings it a little bit, makes it a little less dull on a piece of paper and something that we can all get behind. So that's the description kind of of our transition year, which would be our first year. Labeled here, specific department goals that we can all align around. Finalize a four-year marketing master plan, issue an RFP to complete photo and video shoots, asset creation for new brand campaign, with a final goal of finalizing the video content for our commercial unit for the 2022 uh, ANA, which is a significant national media buy for, um, for the city of Rancho Mirage. On the marketing side, create annualized advertising and marketing plans for events and destination attractions, issue an RFP for web and social support, which those are, expire, or those are getting ready to expire this year, onboard digital marketing coordinator and video production coordinator onto our team. Those are two vacant positions we currently have launch the digital version of RMTV, and then work with our three major resorts on measurable, measurable co-op opportunities that drive ROI and drive, uh, drive rate and work directly with them. And then we've also created some communication goals. So I'm not gonna go through each and every individual goal. You've had time to review those and look through those. Um, but uh, this, this, keeps, this is something our whole team and our whole department can align around over the next four years. So, so you know what we're doing and we're, we're moving the ball forward. Then we kind of break out in your presentation, the elevation goals for 20, 2022, 2023. The biggest standout here is creating a 50th year anniversary plan for city events and aligning all of our communication and some of our celebration of the events we do to line around that 50th year anniversary. Same uh, marketing goals is in assessing the first year and making adjustments as needed. And then we've also created communication goals for year number two of that plan as well. Celebration year, which will be a fun year, which we're all looking forward to. This really comes the culmination of the first two years building up to this celebration time. And then it gives us the halfway point of this marketing master plan to really review how we're on target and adjust as needed. So there's develop department goals, marketing goals, and communication goals along that as well, um, outlined in your, in, your, uh, in your packet. And then finally, we come to the evolution. So in 
year four or five, this uh, section 31 really starts to materialize as we discussed. There's been in that master plan, there's two new five-star resorts. There's about 2,000 homes. There's an attraction unlike the only one of its kind in California. So there's so much that we're asked to envision right now. Um, having this start to materialize over the next couple of years really is a game changer for Rancho Mirage tourism specifically. So we've outlined some goals, much of which would then be drafting what the next four or five years look like. So there's always an ongoing plan for reference and achievable deliverables each and every year. Currently, that doesn't exist. And so the goal here is to never really get off track again for the marketing department, always have a, uh, a plan that's guiding our resources and our manpower and our spend. So we've outlined goals for, for that final year as well. Okay, so currently the tourism branding, um, the branding assets. So 2000, 2008 and 2009, uh, City of Rancho Mirage created a comprehensive campaign. Um, and a review of that campaign has not happened in the last 12 years. Typically a destination, which is the rapid trends of destination marketing and travel, typically you do this about every five years. The previous campaign is very personality driven, which you'll see in a second, versus experience driven. Today's traveler wants an experience, wants to under, you know, understand the itinerary experience, not necessarily uh, have it be people driven. So, and, and a personality driven campaign has a much shorter shelf life than an experiential one. Uh, previous campaign costs in 2008, 2009, uh, we spent approximately 75,000 in photography and about another 75,000 in graphic design to kind of bring this 12-year-old campaign to life. Here you can kind, kind of see a, a modeling of what that campaign, very robust, featured a lot of our destinations, but also featured key personalities within our city at that time. Um, so these, this is the last time we've created a tourism asset was about 13 years ago. So a lot of these are either no longer relevant, the business landscape has changed, you know, um, maybe, our, maybe our use of that likeness of that person has run out, I don't know. Certainly, uh, and then as, as you'll notice, one funny point to point out, I was actually in this campaign. I didn't work for the city 13 years ago, but when I ran the a and my wife and I were here, and then in the far right one, uh, there's a little girl who's six months old in that picture. She's now 13 and in eighth grade. So uh, I think it is time to upgrade our, uh, our tournament collateral. That's just or our, our uh, city collateral. Um, one, one other thing I wanted to focus during our study session and in our previous presentations, it had been asked by the council, what are other cities spending specifically on just tourism, uh, tourism advertising and marketing? So a quick poll of some of the other cities that have marketing dollars only dedicated just to tourism branding. This is not event sponsorship. This is not uh, outside of just marketing the destination. Palm Springs has an allocation of about 750,000, Palm Desert 400, La Quinta 400, Indio and Indian Wells around 150, and Rancho Mirage were at 75. And that, is, and that is strictly just the summer chill campaign through the CV co-op. So we're not actively working with our resorts on annual marketing opportunities um, and plans for them. That's just us paying the fee for the co-op with the CVB. Here's a collection of, of, of cities of their various logos that we wanted to put in there. And we have a city seal logo, we have a municipal logo, and then we have a tourism logo. Most destination, you know, all destination marketing uh, companies or consultants or experts that we've worked with always advocate that a city have a separate tourism brand and a municipal brand because one is for public information, residents, businesses, and then the other one's to attract outside. So having those two separate brands is highly recommended. Some, some of the cities in the Coachella Valley do, some don't. Uh, we, we do, and so we're talking about our tourism brand not our city brand today. So brand identity, again, the way we structured what you're about to see in some of these concepts in this plan is we really dove in this uh, destination marketing uh, company, pulled about 30 people, 30 key people in the community, head of all of our attractions, our resorts, our city, some of our city council, some of the city staff, and we really created a brand architecture. It's really the foundational qualities of Rancho Mirage, focus on a quality of life and well-being, premier level leisure and superior built environment. As that continues to build, our personality is that, that it's inspiring, cultured, warm, and tranquil. We carved out three pillars that we wanted to focus on from a tourism standpoint immediately, our resorts. Our resorts are tied to our TOT, significant, uh, significant revenue opportunity for the city. Then our outdoor, our outdoor tennis, golf, 
uh, hiking is, um, you know, is second to none. Outdoor dining, and then really our arts and culture. We have beautiful observatory. We have a beautiful library. We have a writers' festival that's in its eighth year that's gotten global recognition. So really focusing on our arts and culture um, in, in Rancho Mirage is really important. And then really come, bringing all that into kind of a, almost a mission statement or re, a, a reason to believe. City's cultural appreciation, tranquil vibe, humane values, premier luxury experience, rich history and desert beauty offer enrichment for mind, body and spirit. You look at areas like Sunnyland. So our strategic positioning is enrichment. When you come to Rancho Mirage and you experience everything Rancho Mirage, you walk away enriched. And that's a, that's a strategic positioning that not every city in the desert uh, can hang its hat on, and we certainly can, and that's one we're suggesting. Here is just kind of a brand, a, a brand personality. So if, if Rancho Mirage was a person, uh, they'd be cultured, they'd be distinguished, inspired, relaxed, welcoming, giving, creative, eclectic, and entertaining. This really drove us, creating that brand architecture and then creating that brand personality, really drove us to a color palette for our tourism brand, which is really inspired by, inspired by, the, by the golden hour. Um, if you're sitting up at the, at the Ritz-Carlton, which is the bottom right, you're in one of our hiking trails, you're in your backyard looking at the mountains, the different hues, that sunset hour uh, is about as perfect as it gets here in Rancho Mirage. You're out on the golf course just before, you know, playing the last hole just before dark. So really this color palette is inspired by the golden hour. Logo here, we wanted to create a, a logo that we, you know, the city had been using RM, RM Magazine, RM Weekly, pretty interchangeably with the words Rancho Mirage. So we wanted to come up with something that combined, not only is this kind of a, a, a general outline of the destination where Rancho Mirage is right in the heart, but it gets us clean lines and includes our color palette, but then it also includes the destination descriptor of Heart of the Palm Springs Valley. That's been part of the logo since its inception and was coined and created by our council member, Dana Hobart. And so it was important to keep that. And that was one of the recommendations from the study session is to keep that. So here you have more of a clean, clean lines logo that has the words Rancho Mirage, also has the outline of RM, includes the color palette and has the geo, uh, the geo locator on it. Here you're gonna see a couple, a couple concepts as we come with the, uh, again, with the enrichment vibe and showing the experience of Rancho Mirage. We want to show you kind of what that logo looks like with some of our existing photography. And really, as, as we've reviewed this with our destination experts, they said, well, Rancho Mirage has all these unique and amazing experiences. Plus, when you talk about Sensei Porcupine Creek, you talk about this grand oasis, really what we, what we arrived on is you're, at, you're being asked to not only uh, imagine, imagine being there. So what we're trying to call to action is if somebody who hasn't been here, hasn't been here in a while, or somebody who comes here on a regular basis, imagine. Here's, here's, a, here's a sample, imagine a place that brings the stars closer to Earth, our observatory. We have the only one in the region. And so here you have an imagine tagline, but the focus is the actual experience and bringing that experience to life. And then you have the logo and the geolocator uh, located in the bottom. So this is some of our existing photography, and then we're gonna show you some of the mock photography of how we can really bring this to life as well. Here you have another example of our Agua Caliente uh, resort and spa and casino. Imagine a place that never stops playing. Here you have, here you have our Weston. Imagine, imagine a place where the greens outshines the pinks and the purples. And again, these are just conceptual taglines, but gets you the idea of a, of a theme where we can work with our resorts and our destination and have this out, social media, digital media, and in certain marketing, uh, marketing to key areas. Here you have our Ritz, Ritz Carlton. Here you have a sample of what, as, as Porcupine Creek, Sensei Porcupine Creek comes online, working with that group to have key photography. They're gonna need photography. Once they're all done with their project, they're gonna need video. So partnering with them at the key time when there's a renovation or when they're, when they're first coming on board, immediately being able to adopt them right into the campaign the minute they're on board. We currently don't have that ability in our current campaign. Here's, here's another one. Imagine a place where smooth sailing comes with the territory. This is what our Section 31 and our Grand Oasis is uh, projected to look like. So again, our campaign can welcome any type of attraction, any type of uh, a business that we want to feature in our tourism campaign. And these have a long shelf life, unless they change things, but these have a really long shelf life. Here's some, here's some creative photography of, of, of really positioning this at a high end. So what we're, 
part of this part of this staff report is asking for an RFP to go out to get some. We're going to need some new photography. Our Weston is going through some renovations. Sensei Porcupine Creek, they're coming on board here pretty soon. So we're going to need some new photography. But here's some of the things that we've kind of creatively scripted. Yoga out out on the Sunnylands lot or out on the yard there at uh, and the lawn at Sunnylands. Uh, yoga. So really kind of focusing on a mind, body, and soul in our enrichment category, and then creating a concept for each demographic that we'd want to market to in our, in our tourism trend. So this just gives you kind of an idea. Again, these aren't final. These are just conceptual. Um, but this is, this is something we came across that really kind of sells our destination. And we'd, we'd create specific ones for Rancho Mirage along these lines. The other, the other uh, you know, interesting component is we've had the, uh, you know, we've had the LPGA's major. We're second only to the men's masters in terms of the same uh, golf tournament in the same location for 50 years. The ANA Inspiration's been played at our Mission Hills Country Club, and part of our sponsorship has a significant uh, national media buy. We get 15 commercial units in there. Our commercial units are six to seven years old. Don't probably feature the destination as 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 well as it could. So the opportunity as we're updating this. Uh, campaign, we have the opportunity to uh, to upgrade our uh, our video our uh, our videos as well and our commercial units. So here's just a proposed script, not finalized, but would take all of those individual imagine a place. So now you have video vignettes that can be on RMTV, they can be in any kind of commercial unit, partner with our hotels, but then it brings our whole campaign campaign together. So the campaign is is mini vignettes of each attraction. Um, and, uh, and resort and attraction. And then as something new comes on board, you don't have to scrap the whole project. You can just bring a new one in. Or if something goes away, you can replace that. So here is kind of a proposed script that goes along the same type of look of what you've just, this is be a, a video component of what you just saw. Next steps, without having a marketing master plan, the core function of the city's marketing department can experience a diversion of focus. And we saw that. Uh, over the last 10 years. If we don't have a marketing master plan that really guides our process, then uh, there's the ability to, to, to lose focus on what's the most important. Staff, staff recommends approving the marketing master plan. Staff recommends authorizing uh, staff to finalize and implement the proposed tours and branding. And so we're really here today to, for three components. One, that city council would approve the proposed staff uh, for your marketing master plan authorize the city manager and the director of marketing to finalize and implement the proposed tours and branding on behalf of the city of Rancho Mirage, and then authorize the city manager and director, director of marketing to issue a, requ a request for proposal, an RFP for Rancho Mirage-based photography and videography services to build out the tourism campaign and concepts. And um, staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up the public comment period on this item. If any member wishes, any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now's the time to do so. If you are on Zoom, you would hit the raise hand button, or if you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. Okay, anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this item that did not fill out a speaker card? Okay, we'll go to our remote audience. All right, Mr. Mayor, uh, nobody wishes to speak on this item. I'll turn this over to the council. All right, thank you, Isaiah. Um, Gabe, I got to tell you that each time uh, I hear the presentation, uh, I get more excited. Um, we have so many incredible things going on in the city right now uh, over the next few years. And, you know, you enumerated a lot of them. And the theme, can you imagine, is so appropriate. Because can you imagine Section 31? Can you imagine Porcupine Creek? Can you imagine all of the things that are going on in the city now? It's incredible. And so uh, the idea of this new marketing plan, new logo, new commercials, uh, the timing is just so appropriate. and. Uh, I think it's wonderful to be a part of it. So uh, I look, I greatly look forward to it. Um, council comments. Uh, yes, I do, if I may, Mr. Mayor, and I will dovetail, 
off of what you are saying, that first of all, uh, and, and I will glorify your staff and working with this agency, most of all, the study sessions, the um, way you have given everybody the opportunity to speak and add to or criticize this campaign, the way it is so inviting uh, to change, it is, uh, transparency was wonderful, the way you have put this together and continue to do this. So uh, I think it's one of the most best campaigns that I think this city has ever seen. And it's changeable, and you can work with it. And it's just outstanding, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, well expressed. Dana? I would say the same as um, Charlie just said. I think Gabe in particular, would say the same thing. Um, I've done a masterful job in yeah. bringing together so many loose ends. I would almost think that it would be impossible to bring them together, but we've done it. And uh, I think it's going to be a very effective for our continuing to attract um, people and money and excitement. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you very much, Isaiah. And it's nice, Dana, that you've been such a part of it, too, coming up with the initially the theme of the heart of the Palm Springs Valley and how that's been incorporated in this. Uh, Gabe and his creative staff have substituted, uh, put in the picture of the heart right there. Uh, I think it's terrific. And so, uh, well done. Richard? Well, everybody has said what it is so far. It's really a masterpiece of marketing. And uh, Gabe, you did a great job. Um, certainly, there's a lot to look forward to as we develop this program. And we are going to be offering a program which I think will surpass anything that the other cities in the Valley can talk about. So it's a great program. Hopefully we have the funds to pay for it. I'm sure we do. There was one question that I had in the going through the picture montage. There was a, a picture of Agua Caliente. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be involved at all in, in our program? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's important to it is a is it, it's a pretty big attraction because you look at their you know they have a five star spa there. Um, as I look at it from a marketing destination standpoint, um, you know they do have a lot to offer. They you know you have a it's our only casino gaming element, so there is a marketability to it. Um, you know, obviously, uh, so we're we're going to look at the ten. We're going to come back to you and say here's the ten. You know, here's the kind of the first eight to ten attractions, things we, we're going to look at and we're going to recommend. So at each step along this plan, you, uh, council is going to be able to, to look at it and review it before it becomes final. So uh, I put it in there just because I think it is a unique identifier um, because their spa does so well. You have the casino gaming element and you also have the show. Um, so there's, there is an attraction that people from outside the valley are going to want to come stay there, play our golf courses, go to our library and our observatory um, and with being one of our four major resorts right now would probably be something we'd want to partner with them on but uh, but again it that's we haven't finalized what the final list would be at this point I think uh, Agua Caliente fits so well into our marketing plan I'm sure they're looking at doing a lot of the same things in the development of their property but uh, looks good so far look forward to to the future thank you thank you Thank you, Richard. Uh, if there are no other comments, uh, I will ask for a, uh, a motion on this item. Well, I will make the motion, if I may, that the City Council A, approve the proposed four-year marketing master plan. B, authorize the City Manager and Director of Marketing to finalize and implement proposed tourism branding on behalf of the city of Ranch Mirage and C, authorize the city manager and director of marketing to issue a request for the proposals RFP for Rancho Mirage based photography and video graphic services to build out tourism brand campaign 
concepts. Second, the motion. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. <coughs> motion carries 4 0. Okay, it is now approved. Gabe, handle the money carefully. Yes, sir. Judiciously. Yes, sir. Uh, we're counting on you. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll turn out to be great. I'll make you proud. Uh, the uh, the last item on the action calendar is the appointment to the Jocelyn Center Board of Directors. Uh, our city clerk, Christy Ramos, if you would handle that, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, the position of Rancho Mirage representative on the Jocelyn Center Board of Directors is currently vacant. Proper notice of this vacancy was provided to the public and one application was received from Ms. Ann Simley. Mayor Weil is nominating Ms. Simley to serve as the city's representative on the Jocelyn Board for the remainder of the current two-year term, which runs through the end of June 2022. This nomination must be confirmed by a vote of the City Council, and that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. We'll now open up the public comment period on this item. If any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you are on Zoom, you would hit the raise hand button. If you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? We do not. Okay. Anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? Okay, we'll go to our remote audience. All right, Mr. Mayor, we'll close the public comment period. Nobody wishes to speak. All right. Um, let me make a comment that uh, I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing Ann for this position. Uh, I was uh, most impressed with her resume. Uh, she's a very enthusiastic about participating on the Jocelyn board. I think she'll be an active board member, and it was my pleasure to um, present her as a nomination to this uh, body. Uh, with that, is there any other comments? All right. Um, may I have a motion, please? Well, I will make a motion that the City Council appoint Ann Smiley to serve as the City's representative on the Jocelyn Center Board of Directors for the remainder of the current term. Okay. Uh, there's a first a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 4 0. Congratulations, Ann. We look forward to your participation. Uh, at this point, um, I'm going to ask uh, our esteemed city attorney who has graced us uh, with his presence today. Um, and he is going to give us the agenda. We can get him a real mask if he wants. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> Like yours, right? And yours is fine. Uh, our, our city attorney will now give us the agenda uh, before re we recess into closed session. Steve, if you would, please. Thank you. This serves a dual purpose when I'm drilling things, sanding things. So works there. Uh, so the city council now is going to recess into closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 regarding the following existing litigation matters. Uh, vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage, RM Vacation Rentals LLC et al. versus City of Rancho Mirage et al. And uh, the case known as Save Rancho Mirage versus City of Rancho Mirage. That council will also confer with this labor negotiator, that's Isaiah Hagerman, our city manager, um, pursuant to government code section 54957.6A um, regarding negotiations with the Rancho Mirage Employees Association. And that concludes the three items we are going to discuss in closed session. All right, thank you, uh, Steve. We will now recess into closed session. All right, it's uh, 4.03 and the City Council took no reportable action in closed session. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.